Dennis. Uh, uh, good afternoon. Uh, I'd like to thank you uh, for allowing me here today with you and everyone else. Um, uh, my name is Dennis Watson. Uh, I run the Gangsters Out blog. I've been blogging over the night over Gang War for the past nine years. Um, they did it anonymously, got lots of death threats, and I was uh, in the paper net. So um, that was litigated in the Supreme Court of Canada, and I'm still here. And so is my blog. But uh, I have a lot of background in crime prevention. Um, I was born in North Vancouver, raised in Surrey. I went to Green Timbers Elementary and Frank Hurts Secondary, where the two kids were recently killed. And uh, I went through, I, think I joined the Guardian Angels in Surrey when the Wally Burnouts were in town. Um, some of you younger people wouldn't know that. Just a group of thugs that formed a gang and, you know, were doing stupidest thing with Wally. They called themselves the Wally Burnouts. They weren't very smart, typical Surrey chap. And uh, the Guardian Angels came in and uh, then they left. Okay. Um, I went to the Guardian Angel training, became a co chapter leader, then I went on to New York City for advanced training in New York City. And I uh, became a regional coordinator. So when people talk about the New York model, I know what that is. I saw it. Now, if you go to greenjustice.ca or gangstersout.com, there's links to a post that explains exactly what the New York model was. The New York model involved three, af three aspects. Uh, one was uh, enforcement. They enforced the law. They didn't harass the addicts or the homeless. They harassed the drug dealers. The predatory drug dealers <coughs> that brutally murdered Janice Shore, those are the ones that need to be confronted not the addicts or the homeless. But, uh, so, so enforcement of the law was one aspect. Uh, gentrification was another aspect. Uh, they moved Walt Disney on the deuce. Now, when I first heard they did that, because I was there before the, we were, we were fighting with the crack dealers in Harlem and on East 47th Street, trying to score the call of the deuce. We were fighting head to head with the crack dealers. And it was just round the clock violence. We were breaking up fights with kitchen knives between crack dealers Sunday morning. It was round the clock violence. And then after I left, they said they brought in Disney, Walt Disney Store, and put it on the deuce. And I said, Are you guys crazy? That's like putting a Walt Disney Store in Hastings. Hastings. Well, it worked. You know, the, the, the drug dealers felt very comfortable selling crack in front of a porn theater, but they didn't feel very comfortable selling crack in front of a, a Walt Disney Store. And uh, plus, the police started uh, enforcing and arresting them for drug trafficking, and, and the New York model has, has, has transformed. It's been transformed. And uh, the reason that was possible was because of the Mullen Commission. Everyone says Rudy Giuliani was responsible for the New York model, which is true. He did the enforcement and the gentrification. But before him, David Dinks, the mayor, he, he established the Mullen Commission, which uh, was a commission that investigated uh, police corruption. And uh, <coughs> Michael Dowd, there's a documentary about Michael Dowd called The 75. There, there's a, there's a, a link. Sorry, there's uh, there's link there's links to that, but uh, addressing the police corruption is, is is one of the key things that we can get. Into. Thank you. And uh, there's one more person coming, which is again two minutes each for all of you to answer. <coughs> After we go into the audience one. So that question is, what's your response to wake up serving moment and their proposals? Okay, first of all, I'd like to say I totally support the Wake Up Surrey movement. I was at that rally, and it was huge. It was well attended. It was planned by the South Asian community, and it was heartbreaking. <clears throat> there were pictures of the two kids that were killed. There were mothers crying and mourning still. Sorry. Um, it, was, it, was, it was hard. But uh, I think the underlying message from that was Surrey First needs to wake up because they haven't been doing anything. And I think the people need to, need to realize that. So I think whoever takes over for Surrey First needs to realize that we need to do something different. We need to do something more proactive. And, uh, and I attended that rally, and I saw there was a leader from the Sikh Motorcycle Club. And I know that they did a similar rally before. They, it was very organized, confronting City Hall. Let's address crime. Let's address gangs. Let's do something because right now we're not. And I asked him, I said, hey, yo, you want to run for city council? We'll support you. I'm not running, by the way. I'm supporting other candidates who shared like values and ideas. I'm not promoting myself. I'm promoting the cause. And uh, I said to the, he's the leader of the Sikh Morse. I said, yo, you want to run? We'll support you. He says, no, I'm fed up. We did this six months ago. And we, had, we did all this. We planned all this. We said, city hall, we want to do something. And city hall did nothing. 
So when Linda Hefner does a smoke and mirror report, patting herself on the back saying, we're doing such a good job, I say, no, you're not. You know, but I, but I also like to say to, to, to that man and, and to the other people is to, we can make a difference because right now, you know, Surrey first are like rats leaving a sinking ship. You know, they're fighting each other in the media. They have two counselors left. Basically, they're gone. So now we need to coordinate a response between the different parties. Why? Because nobody trusts one party with absolute power. We need a coalition of other parties. Okay, we support to, to burn together and say, we're going to let party politics aside, and we're going to support causes and issues. And confronting crime, drug trafficking, selling phenytoin, that is what we need to confront, in my opinion. When they commit crimes against the citizens in the community that they are supposed to be serving. Sure. Okay, uh, one minute, uh, two, oh, two minutes, okay, okay, go. Okay, first of all, uh, police accountability. Um, uh, that's a very good point. Police need to be accountable. Um, uh, if, but your comment before that, you know, uh, I don't know specifically what you're referring to. Are you referring to this lady here? What you say? I thought you said something. Oh, sorry. I think I was pretty clear in what I said. Okay. Um, my, like my, I, right now, one of my issues on the Gangsters Out blog is the Falun Gong movement. They're, they're being, they're Buddhists who are being put in jail in communist China for their religious beliefs, and they're being executed to order for their organs. It's a genocide. Um, in Cambodia, the Cambodian government, um, the Cambodian genocide was because of communism in, 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 in effect. So me, personally, I have a huge opposition to, to the genocide that the communist um, philosophy has done across the planet. So when I see poverty groups come up who are infiltrated by that, they exploit the poor, just like the drug dealers exploit the addicts to make money off of them. The, the communists exploit poverty groups, say, let's get rid of the police, let's be violent, um, because they have an agenda. And their agenda isn't to promote the, to promote the poor. Their agenda is to do what happened in Cambodia. So when people talk about supporting a direction in that role, I don't support that. Can I but, uh, it's, yes, but as, as far as, uh, just, just for the people who respond, as far as police accountability, Police need to be accountable. No kidding. Rodney King videotaped police. You know, the police in the United States shoot people dead. You know, uh, police need to be accountable. Um, one of the elements of the New York model, which I talked about, is um, addressing police corruption. So addressing police corruption is essential. But I believe in law enforcement. I believe in law and order. I don't believe in anarchy. Uh, moderator, may I have a go and respond sure. to those questions? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I do with the RCMP. The second point. I really don't recommend accusing survivors of a genocide of being implicated in the genocide they survived. Uh, that is a bit of a social thing. You want to respond to it? Um, do anyone as one you want to respond to that? Just, just real, real short. Um, uh, the, the question was about funding for the LRT. Um, uh, I think that's a very good question. Um, I agree with Rajesh on the LRT. Um, I think LRT on the 104 would be an infrastructure nightmare and a waste of money. Um, right now, TransLink gets a billion dollars a year gas tax, 10 cents regional gas tax. Above federal and provincial tax, there's a regional tax, 10 cents a liter. That's a billion dollars a year. Now, no company in the private industry would be allowed to operate a billion dollars a year deficit every year. So not only are they operating a billion dollars deficit every year, the mayor's glutton council wants to keep up finding out new ways to raise taxes. We want to have an additional sales tax, additional tax, additional tax. We have referendums. No. The whole Linda Hefner's whole mindset is raising taxes, raising taxes, spending money. Um, I we believe in fiscal responsibility. Okay. You can't keep expanding, expanding TransLink until you fix it, okay? At SNC Lava, the, the construction company they chose to, to, to build, the, the Evergreen Extension, that was a criminal act. That company is, is involved in corruption charges uh, in this September around the world. Um, we need to be more financially responsible. I think financial responsibility is a very important thing for any council. And Fissuri First has been the least fiscally responsible. They always say, well, the left is going to tax and spend because three first is kind of the right, right wing, um, but they're the neocons.
they spend more than the left does. We need to balance the extremes to be fiscally responsible. Um, this is a naive question again. Is there any way we can work with each other so some of us could get in? <laughs> <laughs> I think that's an excellent question, but, but there's hope. There's hope. Uh, like I said before, out of eight city councilors, five have jumped ship. One's running for mayor, and he's not going to get it. So that leaves Surrey, Surrey uh, uh, first, with all their massive budget, two councilors. So they're cut off at the knees. And I do think it's time for other parties to, to pull together. And uh, Green Justice, we're running one candidate, one candidate only. I'm not running. I'm not here to promote myself, I'm here to promote a cause. I like Regis because his position on LRT. Um, Stewart has a person running from Adam, rock solid. Um, uh, uh, Rosalind Cassells, she's much more response, uh, sensitive to the, to the marginalized. Um, uh, pulling together is what we have to do because like I said before, no, nobody trusts one single party with absolute power. And I think, you know, there, there's some issues that we're not going to agree on. One person wants to go this way, the other person wants to go this way. And, you know, I'm sorry, we're not going to agree. But there are common grounds. And that's one of the good things about a minority government, is because, okay, the right has these ideas, the left has these ideas, and somebody else has these ideas. But within there, there's common ground. So in a minority group, a group in a minority government, all the extremists aren't able to run off in the direction they want to do, all they can do is what they agree on. And that's what's, that's what's good about a minority government. So I do think we can't pull together, and I think that's what's really well.